is Jessica, and I am so glad you're here today. But before we jump in, I have a question for you. Have you ever seen someone your age do something so amazing that you were just really impressed? Take a second and think about it. Okay, I know you got something. Keep it in your brain. I asked a few middle schoolers to tell me some of the amazing and unexpected things that they've seen, and I want you to check out what they said. Um, something amazing that one of my friends can do. Um, he can bend his knee um the opposite way, and I think that's kind of cool. Help me with my homework, but I didn't understand it. My dance company has a fundraiser for girls' education, and one of my friends did something really cool by making her own lollipops, then getting the money that way for the fundraiser, and I thought that was really cool. There was this kid, he like made a half court shot. We were in the gym all playing around, and he literally was a half court and just like shot it, and it, it switched. I was like, okay. I wish I could see all of those amazing things myself. Those are some amazing examples. There's just something about seeing someone who's super young do something incredible. Because sometimes we don't always expect really young people to be able to do such incredible things. And that's what I wanna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about some of the ways that we feel held back simply because we're, well, young. I know there have been plenty of times in my life where I felt a little looked down on because of my age, especially when I was in middle school. When I was in middle school, all of my friends started getting phones and they would all have group chats and text each other and I was the only one who didn't have a phone. My dad said that I was too young to have a phone. I had to wait until the end of seventh grade until I was allowed to have a phone. I'm sure you felt too young in some ways too. Maybe you even feel that way right now. In fact, before we go on, I want you to think of an area of your life where you feel too young or someone tells you that you are too young. Maybe you've been told that you're too young to watch the movie that your older siblings are watching. Maybe you're too young, like me, to have a phone or social media accounts. Maybe you're not old enough to decide what classes you're gonna take or what time your curfew is or when you'll get to date. Maybe you're too young to choose if you want to go to church or what you'll have for dinner or how you wanna spend your time. Sure, you might feel like you're old enough to do those things or make those choices, but the rest of the world? Well, it's just telling you that you're just too young. Too young to do this or talk about that. Too young to decide for yourself. Too young to be taken seriously. Too young to make a difference. Maybe you even feel this way when it comes to faith too. Maybe you think that faith is something for grownups or faith feels complicated and confusing. Sure, it might be important, but right now, it feels like you're a little too young to actually have the kind of faith that everyone talks about. Or maybe you've never even thought about what you believe before. You've got other things to worry about. So faith is something that you might get to later, but for right now, you're not thinking about it. Maybe you feel like you're too young to even choose what you believe when it comes to faith. You come to church every week, well, because you have to. Your parents make that decision for you, so you feel like you're not old enough to choose for yourself. Or maybe you're all in when it comes to faith. You believe in Jesus and you've been following him with your life. You're ready to make a difference. But while you'd like to see God use you for big, amazing things, sometimes it feels like that stuff isn't an option until you get older. Now, let me just stop here and say, when it comes to faith, you are not too young. You are not too young. You are not too young. See, if there is one thing I know about middle schoolers, is that you have everything you need right now to discover more about who God is to decide for yourself what you really want to believe, to ask questions that challenge your faith, to be used by God for some really cool, amazing things, to grow a faith of your own. See, no matter how old you are or what grade you're in, God believes you're ready right now to start owning your faith and making a difference. And here's how I know. Years after Jesus lived here on earth, a guy named Paul did all that he could to make sure Jesus' message continued spreading. Paul dedicated his life to telling everyone about Jesus and encouraging them to develop a faith of their own. Why? Because Paul understood that knowing Jesus changes everything, and he wanted others to know that too. Of course, sharing the message of Jesus was a really big job, one that Paul couldn't do by himself. So he invited other people to join them and one of those people was a guy named Timothy. As Paul and Timothy traveled together to share the message of Jesus, Paul became a mentor to Timothy. He encouraged and instructed him as a leader, both when they were together and when they weren't. Since texting and DMs weren't quite a thing back then, Paul wrote letters to Timothy to support and guide him in his work when they weren't together. We all know this because these letters can actually be found in the Bible today. 
So just as Paul encouraged Timothy to own and grow in his faith as a young leader, his letters can encourage us to do the same. So let's take a look at some of the words Paul wrote to Timothy that I think can help encourage us right now. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. Paul started by talking about Timothy's genuine faith. Another word for genuine is real, a real faith. Seems like a cool compliment, right? But what does it actually mean? You see, in order to really know if something is genuine, you need to look closely. And that's exactly what Paul did to discover Timothy's real or genuine faith. Everything that Paul saw and heard told him that Timothy had a genuine faith in God. Timothy owned his faith in a real way. And not just that, but Timothy kept growing in his faith, sharing what he was learning about God with others along the way. Paul knew that because of Timothy's faith, there was something big that he could do to make a difference in the world around him right then and there. Timothy didn't have to wait until he was older to start. In fact, he was already doing it. What's also cool is that Paul reminded Timothy of the long line of believers that he came from, the faith that was modeled for him by his grandma and his mom, Lois and Eunice. First of all, how great are those names? And how great would it be to have a Lois or a Eunice in your life? I don't mean just women with epic names. I mean adults in your life who show you what a genuine faith in God really looks like. Maybe you know someone like that already, or maybe you wish you did. But for today, here's what I want you to know about this. Timothy didn't just follow in the footsteps of the people who came before him. He didn't just believe because they believed. No, Timothy made his faith his own. And along the way, God used him to do some really amazing things because of it. But for all the amazing adults and mentors who believed in Timothy, like Lois and Eunice and Paul, there were just as many who didn't. Not every person in Timothy's life was supportive of his faith. Not everyone believed he had what it took to lead and spread the message of Jesus. You see, Paul put Timothy in charge of a church he started in a place called Ephesus. But some of the older people in that church didn't value Timothy's leadership just because he was young. Because of that, Timothy might have been tempted to think that he didn't actually have what it took to lead, to grow, to make a difference in Ephesus or beyond. That's what makes this message from Paul so important. Don't let anyone think less of you because you're young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. You see, Paul knew that people might be questioning Timothy's faith and leadership, but Paul wanted Timothy to understand that it didn't matter. He was not too young to have a faith of his own. He was not too young to influence others to do the same. No matter what his age might have been or what little experience he might have had or what other people might have felt about him, Paul reminded Timothy that he had the ability to set an example of faith for everyone. In his words, his actions, his lifestyle, his faith, Paul encouraged Timothy that he was not not too young to decide to grow a faith of his own. And the same is true for you. In fact, let's hear from Chloe and how she made her faith her own. Making my faith my own meant reading the Bible by myself. Once I started to read the Bible myself, I learned so much about God and that helped really strengthen my connection and my faith towards God. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to Chloe. Just like Chloe, you're not too young to make your faith your own. No matter where you come from or how old you are or how much experience you have or even what other people say or think about you, remember that you are not too young to have faith in God. You're not too young to be used by God. You are not too young to make a difference and you're not too young to be an example. So instead of believing that you're too young to own your faith, this week I want you to begin to believe that you're not too young to make your faith your own. And you can start by trying these two things. The first, be confident in yourself. Make the choice to stop believing that you're too young to own your faith. You are capable of learning and understanding more than you ever have before. You can be ready to make a difference right now. So today you can decide to make your faith your own and that starts with simply being confident in yourself. Then do one thing to grow your faith. Start by asking God to help you grow your faith in one way. Maybe for you that means choosing a good circle of friends, reading the Bible regularly, thinking about what you watch or listen to, praying for your family or prioritizing and going to small group. Or maybe it's simply asking questions about God or starting a conversation with someone you trust about faith or just showing up here each week to continue to explore what you believe. Whatever it is, identify just one 
thing that you can do to grow your faith. And then do it. Take one step to grow that way right now. Because even as a middle schooler, you can make your faith your own. So remember, you are not too young to make your faith your own. So believe that. Believe that you are capable of a meaningful, genuine faith that can not only change your life, but can change the lives of others along the way. The best news is that you don't have to do this alone. You have your group and your group leader to help you. Your group leader not only wants to be a model of faith in your life, they want to support you as you figure out what your faith really looks like. Your group is a great place to ask questions and keep this conversation going. You are not too young.